What's up everybody? Thanks for watching. I have a great video for y'all today. One that I've been working on for a long time. Actually, I probably started back months ago. It goes back to one of the first videos that I ever made was a marquee video. I've All of mine I always made by hand and just kind of tracing out. I would print out the paper, cut it out, and just boom, 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 go each time. No measurement angles. I would just cut, find the angle, put it on there, find the angle. But so many people would ask me like, can you make me plans for those? I would do the stencils, but they wanted the, the the measurements for the outside. Oh man, I did not want to do that just because it was so time consuming to find out each measurement and each angle and try to simplify it. Because honestly, I would cut until I'd find it exactly right, nail it. The biggest problem with that, and people have those plans out there, is that the measurements are so hard to read, especially if you're kind of new to this and you, you this isn't you're not a woodworker. You just don't want to pay a woodworker to build them. You want to build them yourself. Those measurements can kind of throw you off and so what I want to do when I really decided that I'm gonna do this was simplify the measurements so these are all specifically made letters so they can have easier measurements to read in a minute when I kind of show how I'm making the seven you're gonna kind of realize oh I try to simplify all the measurements for these and I've gone through all of them to do that for you if you're, if you're watching the channel we've seen our builds the reason it takes me a little longer is I try to simplify the process so it's it's not difficult Anybody can do this and you don't need some crazy amount of tools if you don't have a brad nailer Which I would definitely encourage you to get but if you don't have if that's not something you want to invest in And you just have a drill and you just want to make one letter just to see how it goes You can actually make it with just a drill you don't need a brad nail gun even though it makes it so much easier You don't need it just a jigsaw and a drill and you can actually start building these. then again if, if you want to build the whole alphabet and you want to do all that stuff There's definitely some tools that I'm gonna recommend that's gonna make your life so so much easier when you're building these. Let's talk about those. The first thing we're gonna talk about is a miter saw. What I actually did is I looked online, homedepot.com, and I found the least expensive um, miter saw I can get. So in case maybe this is not something you do, I know a lot of people don't have this tool, I wanna see, let me find the smallest, least expensive one I can do, and can I build these letters? This one actually worked well. Even the batteries, I worked well with it, so I had no problem creating these marquees with the least expensive miter saw. You don't need a six, $700 miter saw. You can get this done with a $140 miter saw. It's gonna save you so much of a headache. So technically, with all the angles that I have, you can do this with a circular saw. If you're doing a lot, I don't really recommend it. It's it's so much on there. And another thing that I'll talk about real quick is I broke down the angles. So you're not getting some crazy amount of like super steep angles. I broke everything down, which definitely took a lot of work, but I'm glad I did it, especially for something like the A. So if you see the cut with the A, uh, it's actually just two boards sandwiched together. I didn't have to cut that super steep angle, which can kind of be difficult. And especially if you're a new woodworker, or you don't have those type of tools, it can be very difficult and a little dangerous. You're trying to get those cuts. You have to get a little closer. Don't recommend it. The perfect size. So there's an inch gap at the top. So two half inch boards will actually fit flush in there and you're just cutting off the top. Worked out perfect. Saves you a lot of hassle, a lot of guessing work doing something like this. So the main part of the plans is the measurements and the angles that I kind of changed to make this super easy so anybody can do this. Again, I was getting so many messages just from people who don't really have a woodworking background or don't have the experience of doing this. And I wanted to show you like, it's not hard, it's not difficult at all. Anybody can do this as long as you're working within your skill set. Be safe, learn about the tools before you use them. All right, so the next thing we're gonna talk about, this is especially doing, if you're gonna do multiple letters and you want these things looking clean and professional, you don't have to have an expensive table saw. Uh, there's this, jig from craig i think it was like 45 dollars, but oh my goodness it is worth it i've had it before and i wanted to get it again just so i can show you for this video if you're going to be knocking out a bunch of these letters it's definitely worth it and you'll see how we just kind of line it up and it'll cut all the way on there and what i did is i had it backwards at first i had the blade towards the inside but if you flip it around you'll have the blade on the right place where it should be and you'll be able to cut i have my width set to four inches you can cut it four or five inches uh, whatever you want but definitely estimate this craig jig made it go by if you're not a professional with this saw and you can use this for so many things so if you're not a professional with cutting straight lines you just kind of put this on it's gonna make those cuts look so clean it's so much easier it's definitely worth it in the end because you see the end product and you're like wow i didn't have thousands of dollars worth of tools but i made this look super nice and super clean and that's a great feeling so those are two of the tools that i do recommend the third tool uh, is obviously 
a brad nail gun i use the 18 gauge brad nail gun they work great i use one inch brad nails when i do these um, you don't want them too long but you definitely want to make sure you get a good connection and wood glue i didn't show any wood glue on here but if you are putting these together i definitely recommend wood glue so i really didn't want to make a whole video of just me building and building and building and building a whole thing i just wanted to break it down so i can simplify each step i actually made the seven because it's going to be a simple thing that I can easily stop and show you how I'm building it, why I'm doing certain things and why I'm doing this. All right, so we're gonna build the number seven. Let's get started. All right, you're gonna print these at 100% scale, exactly the way they are set up. And there'll be a little gap in between. Just ignore the gap. That's the best way to stay accurate. Don't cut. Just have them right next to each other. I'm not gonna lie, that can be a pain, especially when you're doing them all, and then they need to be the exact measurements, so you have to stack them just right. If you're off a little bit, it'll throw the measurements for the, all the other ones. Um, but for those people who have no other option, you can print it from home. It just takes an uh, additional amount of time, making sure you're precise, so you can double check your measurements. But if you don't wanna deal with that, I also included them in a full-size PDF, which you can take to FedEx, UPS, any printing store, and they're like five bucks to print, five to 10 bucks to print. A lot better than trying to double check all 12 papers or 16 papers to make sure they add up. Bam, just print out from UPS. I think I paid like $8 or something like that, but also it's because I had them do it for me. If you just go to the little print shop and just bring a USB or you can just plug it in, press print. I think it's only like five bucks for this. But also, if you have a CNC or even a laser machine, I'm including the full size files, so you can actually just switch them over to your laser or your CNC and cut out the back end. You don't have to worry about anything. I'm gonna come up with a video and show you how I cut these out my CNC, just so you have an option. So you can print it out from your own printer. You can take it to UPS or any other print shop and just tell it you just want black and white, just a basic print. It should be like five to 10 bucks. So laser, CNC, home printer, or print shop a couple of different options kind of everybody does things their own way and within within their budget so definitely hope this is friendly enough for everybody to give a try uh this will be the pdf measurement which is this this is kind of the key that you're going to be using what i did is kind of made a diagram of how the wood should go all the measurements are going to be based off the inside corner so i didn't want to overwhelm you with a bunch of measurements which sometimes people do and i know a lot of people get frustrated with that especially you're new to woodworking or you just kind of want to go out and make something and then you see a, a full page of like measurements everywhere you're like i don't want to do this i simplified it and what i did is all of all we're going off of are the measurements the actual number so whatever you cut is going to be this i could have given you the measurements for this and the top because some pieces are longer like if you cut at an angle and i'm like this 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 too much more information than you need where all the numbers are going to be based on the outside so if it's here it's going to be based off of off of what's here this top not what's at the top of this so you'll see it it'll, it'll make sense when you see the plans say this is cut like at a 45 degree angle right here and so it's 10.4 inches long here but it's nine inches here i just went with the nine inches you're going to cut always whatever's going to be the bottom size so you go to the nine inches and it may go out more or less if it's a 45 degree cut or whatever size cut you have don't even worry about it just go to the nine inches cut your 45 at the nine and the bottoms it, it, it's not going to matter it's just going to give you more information that you don't really need and then on the inside it'll be reversed so another way that i simplified the plans was those angled cuts rounded them off to the closest thing and it's, it's gonna match. This is the miter saw and this is what you'll be using a lot. And if you can see here, you got 40, most of them only go to 45, maybe a little bit more, but most only go to 45 and zero. Maybe they'll have a, a 75 degree cut or anything like that. I simplified it and you're gonna have exactly what you'll, exactly what you're gonna see on here is what you're gonna be able to read on the plan. So it's super simple, really no excuses to kind of mess this up. All you're gonna do, depends which one you have, turn this to where you need it make your cut and you're good so i simplified the plans to have these so that's what you're going to be doing you just turn it to a side whatever angles on the plan put it here 
put your board here, cut, no problem. Super simple. It's asking for 23 inches. So this tool right here, we're gonna make sure we're at zero, which just means we're even, we're flush. Line that up. I'm gonna cut on that side to make sure I leave the actual 23 inch width. If I cut right on the line, it'll cut me like, I'll be at like 22 and, and, a, and a, some change. I need to be at 23, so I'm gonna cut on that side of the line. Our next one is going to be seven, seven inches. Again, we're, we're going to cut on this side because if I cut right on the line, I'm going to short change because you got to account for the blade size. I line it up. Still see a little bit of the line left. Let's put those together and let me show you kind of how we're going to fit. Them. What we're going to do is sit this one first because this one sits flush. If you can see it right here. We're gonna be flush here, and we're gonna be flush here. All right, and once we have this one, then we know we're gonna make sure that this goes flush over this, and it'll line up exactly where we want it. So I know right when I put this against there, we're flush. But if you wanna use a screw instead, you can do that as well. You just gotta make sure it's flush shot in there so now we have this right so we're gonna we're gonna make sure our next one is flush against this and what I did in the instructions is I actually made an actual image of the little board so you can see how this one overhangs this one so you know this one is gonna go over this all these measurements are gonna be based off the inside so whatever you're cutting so later on say we're cutting this one right here it'll be based on the inside not the outside of the board but the inside and what i find easier is actually to nail to this first no nail shot through so our next one, we're gonna cut the other side, which is another seven. And if I don't have an angle on anything, that means it's just a straight cut. When I do have an angle, you'll see, like next we're gonna cut a um, 15 degree angle here. But for this one, there's no angle, so it's just straight cuts. And if you're never not sure, always cut a little bit bigger just in case it, it's not exactly where you want it to be. You can always shim a little bit more off. If you cut shorter and you put out, there's nothing, you just, you have to use that board somewhere else or throw it away. So always cut a little bit bigger just in case you need to, you can, it's very easy to shave down. So, exactly where we need to be right there. Okay. So I'm going to tack to this side to make it easier for me. So this is a great point. This says 14.5, which I'm still finishing these up, but it's actually 14 and a half. So this will be 14 and a half inches this way. But if you see, we have a 15 degree angle that we need to cut coming this way. So if you actually look at the image, it's a little longer this way because it goes this way and cuts back this way. So I don't need to give you the measurement of this bottom after that 15 degree cut. We're going for the top. So from here to the edge of here, we follow whatever is up here that's the 14 and a half and then this bottom whatever it really doesn't matter we're going for what's against this perfect example so let me show you how to cut that 15 degree super simple super simple we got 0 15 30 and 45 we're gonna just move this all over to 15 tighten the back thing back here so now we know it's not moving we're stuck at 15 degrees before we cut anything let's cut our 15 degrees
Now we're gonna cut our long side, so we gotta go back. We gotta go back to zero degrees or 90 degrees, really, but we're coming back for straight cut. So we got our 15 degree here, right? Remember, we're following for what's in the plan. So it wants 14 and a half from the top edge. So we're not doing this bottom edge, which will be a different number. 14 and a half from up here. So we're up there. And remember, just in case it comes off, we're gonna give a little bit more slack always on this side of the line. In case we need to go more, we can. But if you cut it too short, it's a ruined piece and you have to use it somewhere else. A zero degree cut or a 90 degree cut. It has it on here, zero, but it's a 90, it's just a straight cut. I left a little bit more. You can still see my pencil mark right here. And then we have the, this edge right here, 14 and a half to here. Let's see if it fits. All right, guys, why didn't anybody tell me this? <laughs> um, so I have it right on here, it's a seven, but I've been making the seven backwards, which the seven goes like this, right? Or does it, I'm lost, backwards. So I don't know how it looks to you, but in, in real life, the seven's supposed to look like right here. So these, these right here, they're where they're supposed to be, but they're supposed to be out facing this way. They're supposed to be on this side. That's the seven. Uh, I'm focusing on the wrong part, but super simple. I'm just gonna hammer all those back out and re um, re put those back in. All the measurements still should still be the same. That was just my mistake of not putting the right seven and facing the right way. I had it backwards. Embarrassing. All right. I'll see you in a second, and it'll be all fixed. Nobody will ever know. And we're back. So this is the one we had cut uh, straight and then this is a 15 degree angle. The angle is to make sure we fit flush against here. And if you remember, I cut a little bit bigger than I needed to just to be safe. And I do have a little bit of an overhang over here. So I'm just gonna trim the rest of that off. It's always better to be safe than cut it shorter and then it's gonna look funny. We're back where we should be. There we go. That'll work. This is that angle, that 15 degree angle. Since we come in this way, it hits perfect and flush. And now we're gonna do this one. This one's 28 and a half. We're gonna have a 15 degree angle here and a 15 degree angle here. It's, it's gonna go right at the edge. 28 and a half, 15 degree, 15 degree. Now double check to make sure the 15 degree, for this one, the 15 degree is gonna be both facing the same angle. They're both like this. But sometimes they're opposite. But for this one, it's you'll be able to see on the image of kind of the angle it wants. Cut that 15 degree angle first. I'm gonna just move this back here the way we did previously and just move it over to the 15 degree angle. Now let's cut our 15 degree angle at the edge just so no, we're starting off where we need to be. Remember, cut it bigger than it should be and then you can put it together and if you need to, you can cut less. So that's 28 and a half. But to be sure, I'm gonna cut a little bit bigger and then I know I can come back and cut a little bit lower. That's why I'm always telling you, just to be safe, cut bigger and then you can kind of sneak up on that cut a lot better. If you had a flat table, this would be super easy, but my table is like a, so it makes it way more difficult. And we're flush here. Let's do this side. So this falls for 29 inches here, but I have a 15 degree and a 15 degree. And this says 29. And remember, check your angles. This one's gonna cut it this way, cut it this way. Let's trace this mark over to the other side. So I marked it here, right? I'm gonna just sit this up, bring this there. We're gonna give it extra slack again. See, there's my line. I cut a little bit more right there. All right, so I just need to cut that hair off and we're good. So we're just slowly sneaking up on this cut. So our 15 degree cut goes right there. Okay. 
last piece is this bottom piece which let me explain something a little bit about this one so i did want to make these plans kind of more universal so depending on your preference i don't know if you're going to have these hooked up to like maybe a metal bracking you can just do the regular four inch base five inch base six inch base this like the number seven and number four they're gonna tilt they're not they're not made to just stand by themselves the seven's gonna fall over something especially if you're gonna be outdoors and you're like oh the wind's gonna come or something's gonna depending where you're at some places psh, looks perfect sunny california looks perfect uh here in texas it'll, it'll look perfect for a second and then like whoo, thunderstorm comes in wind blows and then it's back to normal it's crazy so if you want to make sure you have something some stability for outdoors you can widen the bottom base um so let me show you what i'm talking about um you'll see some people who they'll make them which i've done them that way before where you have these maybe you'll make them like eight inches so you'll have them longer coming out at three or four inches in the back all the way around like this and then like three or four inches in the front the reason um i stopped doing that is because it can get really annoying when you're trying to use your nail gun right against the edge to be able to come like this the board's sticking out instead of like this you're like this shooting up and it's just it, it was a pain so I stopped doing that and I, I just make them flush. Stanley, that's something you might run into. Man, it kept getting annoying. So I, I just stopped and I just made them flush. So that's the reason I don't have them longer in the back. And then a, these are four inches, but you can go five inches, six inches. But for the bottom base, I'm, I cut an eight inch base. And that's what I'm gonna cut right here right now. And I'm gonna show you how you can use that. And then you just put some weights in the back. Um, nine inches. So it's just nine inches. So you can use a circular saw to cut this, or you can use this and just flip it. We only cut to about right there, right? What I'm gonna do is just flip it over, and we'll finish the cut off. Make sure we're lined up. There we go. And just for some added stability, I'm gonna add some screws. Now we have a base and then you can get uh, some sandbags or whatever you want and you'll have something to, so you can put some supports on. Thanks for watching. I'm glad I could help. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And thank you for everybody for watching, subscribing. Summer's coming, y'all. So, whew.
Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.